All right, guys, so today we're upgrading the winch that came on this Rubicon. It's got the shitty steel wire and the shitty rollers. We're gonna upgrade it to some AM steel. I got red, because it's nice and it's visible. And if it, gets, it comes out, it gets caught in your wheel, you can see it good. We're gonna put a cheapo $5 eBay um, Haas, aluminum Haas, and we're gonna put, in lieu of a hook, we're just gonna tie a bowline in this red line, and we're just gonna put us a soft shackle. This is the best way to pull out four wheelers. That hook doesn't fit around any racks. That will fit around racks and it won't scratch them up. Now we're also gonna see what the goofiness is with this Honda winch mount and get that figured out. Um, so to get the winch off, you gotta pull the front bumper. Um, so you got two bolts and nuts up here. And then you take out a couple tens on your skid plate, two on each side and then two down here. Drop that out of the way. And you can see where the winch bracket bolts down here in the same spot as the bumper. Um, and yeah, we're just going to pull the bumper. One thing to remember is when you go to pull the bumper, these brackets that come with the bumper right here, tied to your plastic. So you got to pull these tins as well. But this is how all the foremans and ranchers work for the longest time. So it's pretty simple. Once you get the bumper on the ground, you can get to everything real easy. <clears throat> all right. So Honda, I don't know what you're smoking with this winch mount. It is the dumbest thing ever. So it's overly complicated. All these bolts and nuts, and there's still two more in there. These two back nuts are really hard to get to because they're right up against the differential. And on top of that, it's a really dumb design. It has the winch at a terrible angle, puts a nice sharp bend in your cable, no matter what kind of roller you're using. Honda tried to get, kind of get around that by using one of those big rollers there, like for a plow. But dude, this winch bracket is so stupid. And these bolts right here that snapped off are welded in there. So like, what? And they're super tiny, no wonder they snapped off. As soon as you put the winch in and it pulls on this, it's gonna snap those bolts. It's just, it's so dumb. Honda, knock off one of the 20 aftermarket companies that are making winch brackets that are simpler, lighter, cheaper, probably just as strong and way easier to install than yours. I mean, this is just mind-blowingly stupid. Also, those threads are stripped out and that nut welded the frame because the dealership that installed it didn't line it up right and cross threaded the heck out of it. Thanks. Just like everything a dealership does for you, garbage. Um, but yeah, those two bolts are really hard to get to. So freaking stupid. So finally got the stupid winch bracket off. You can see those welded in bolts there. It's so complicated and stupid. In order to get to these two bolts, you have to remove the front diff bracket, which it's clear that's how Honda also installed it at the dealership because in the process, they cross threaded one of the bolts for my front diff, which is amazing. The other bolt, was the hand tight. You think you're getting a good deal buying accessories from the dealership? You're not. They're probably worse than you are, unless you're real dumb. So this bracket's designed really dumb and it was installed really poorly. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the trash. I'll probably use this winch because it's a nice worn winch, but I'm gonna get the KFI simple bracket that just mounts to the two holes on the bumper and it ties into these two holes up here. Probably not as strong. However, I've never broken one of them. So this is just overkill, way overcomplicated. So this is the KFI bracket. It's about a half the weight of the Honda one. Um, it doesn't fit quite perfect. It's made to fit ranchers and foremans and whatever else and Rubicons. These 2020 plus bumpers are a little different, um, but I find that on all of them, if you take it and you grind where I show you right there, take that edge off, it makes it fit a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to get these top bolts in. This m mounts your winch upside down, but it has proper alignment, so it's great. Highly recommend one of these. All right, so there it is with the winch line installed. Obviously the bumper's upside down right now. Um, that's how it looked from the front, but same thing I do in my other video, pull it through the hole, pass it back underneath, and then it'll pinch itself when it goes to pull it. And that's all you gotta do, a very simple way to attach it. Comes off easy when you need it to, and it looks pretty sharp. Um, some people like to take this part and wrap it with tape. So spool the winch in and let it pull some tape around there for extra security. Um, this always works fine for me, that little jam way right there. If you're looking at how to do this and you can't figure it out, I've got a couple other videos on it. Every winch is a little different depending on how they mount, but that's definitely the right way to attach synthetic to a winch. Some people were saying, um, what do I do if my winch line is too big to go in that hole? It's in my other video, but you just grab a few strands of it. It's 12 strands. So you grab a few of those out, pull them out and cut them off. That'll taper it down. Then once you get the taper through the hole, you can yank it the rest of the way usually. Um, if you need to, you can taper it all the way back. You lose a little bit of strength, but you don't need that much strength this far down, right? 
you should never be winching unless you have a couple wraps on there regardless. So um, now I just got to bolt it up there. It's usually a little bit of a fight. As you can see, these holes don't line up super well um, and the weight of the winch is hanging down. One thing you need to make this easier on yourself is jack up the foiler so you're not bent over real far trying to work on it. Um, so I'm about to do that, but somehow I've got it balanced right there also. It's kind of funny. I'm not really touching it. But yeah, this winch bracket is going to have proper alignment. You always want the winch pulling close to the bracket. It puts less stress on the winch, less stress on the bracket. It's just the right way to do it. Um, and then there's a nice shiny fair lead. So this would be a lot nicer to deal with than the wired rope that was on there from Honda. All right, the winch is all jammed up. This is how I've been doing it lately. It's just a soft shackle, tie a loop with a bowline, hit the end of it with a lighter or a torch. That holds really well. Uh, everyone says you should braid it. That's way faster and it's almost as strong. And like I always say, if I'm gonna break the rope, I wanna break it at the end. So that does put more stress on the rope, so it should break right there. Um, and I just throw up on the rack like that, good to go. You can see the red in there, it looks nice, easy to keep an eye on. Plenty of room on the spool with 50 feet. Um, so that's all jammed up and good to go. I also put one of these little guys, um, someone suggested it. Thank you, I was already thinking about doing it, but just for some extra assurance, I put a little hose clamp with a thumb turner on the drain for the air box make that a little more watertight and impossible to get knocked off. Um, and uh, someone else noticed, they said, hey, you know, most of your vent lines are in your headlight pod. That thing went under. Did you get water in your stuff? Yes. I'm gonna change the front and rear diff right now. I got a little water in my radiator. Who cares? It's a radiator. So you can see the level still looks okay. So not that much in there. Um, but yep, getting water in your diff isn't good. You should change it right away. I waited a week because well, I've been busy. Um, so we go ahead and change the diffs right now and see how milky they are. If they're real bad, I'll show you. And um, this is the most important vent. This is a gas tank. It's good to go. I'm also going to check all the connections and all my vent lines and make sure none of those came loose. Um, kind of stuff you have to do after you first snorkel the machine. I'm going to lower this a little bit. I was experimenting with it up this high. It's a little annoying, so I'm going to chop that down right now too. Probably take off four inches. All right, so yeah, diffs were pretty milky, as you can see by my demonstration by spilling. Um, rear wasn't as bad. Front was pretty milky. So I went ahead and moved those vent lines from up here. The only one up here now is the radiator because I don't want coolant spraying into my face. Um, so that's fine. I don't care if I get water in my radiator that much. This vent line right here is now front diff, rear diff, and fan all in one. Someone said, why don't you run all these vent lines in your air box? You can totally do that. You have to run them across the motor, which means chances of them melting and stuff. And then you also have to put a bunch more holes in your air box, which could cause leaks. But I used to do that. It's a nice way to do it. Nothing wrong with it as long as you do it right. Um, and then there's the T. So that's black is front and rear diff and the pink is obviously fan. I also added a big zip tie here to tie this into this fender liner to help that be a little more supported. And now the snorkel is even more stout. You can really shake the whole bike and knock the impact over. Um, but yeah, so now all you gotta do is um, put oil in the diffs, put the airbox cover and the seat back on and go ride it and abuse it some more. Pretty good progress. It's crazy this little line right here is rated for like 7,000 pounds. Amazing.